Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back to the season premiere of The Good Brothers. I'm Alex, that's Mike, we're The Good Brothers, we are finally back, the best podcast in the Chicagoland area, in the multiverse, the Spider-Verse, and the Pigverse. Mike, how's it going? It is going. How are you doing, good brother? It's good. It's good to be back. I call this our season premiere. It's our phase three. We're in the new studio. We finally have enough of three months of topics to really go over in every little subgenre of a genre. There is more news than ever in our little universe, so I'm very excited to be back. Absolutely. And there, this has been an interesting time because besides all the social commentary that we've been going through on top of everything of COVID-19, now we're going to see a lot of things happening to the genre and some of the things that we cover here on The Good Brothers. This is one of the times where it's all kind of coming together. You and I have used our platform over the last few episodes that we have been able to get on to kind of talk about stuff that's going on in the world. Now we're going to be able to talk about stuff that's been going on around the world that is now kind of being really melded into some of the genres that we talk about. So we have a lot of things when it comes to video games, when it comes to the theaters themselves, and of course, some of the news that came out of the wrestling world. So Good Brother, it is always a pleasure to be on the network with you, back on our show, The Good Brothers. He's on Twitter at Mercado2121, and on Instagram at Mercado21Alex. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. And also the podcast is out of jail, so follow us at Good Brothers Pod, including the network at Mercado Airways. Yeah, that was my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Brother, what would you like to talk about first? You know what? Um, we'll start with movies like we always cool. do. We usually break down the box office. Yeah. Uh, I see in Phase 3 we're probably not going to have much box office. So let talk. me ask you this. Let's, let's start kind of in a broad conversation. Mm-hmm. What do you feel about what's going on with the movie theaters? I Look, at a lot of people who listen to me in the Chicagoland area on the radio show on Outreach Radio Chicago kind of know that while I'm a very optimistic person, I've been taking kind of a pessimistic view on what's going to be open and what's going to be closed over the next few months where we're at for 2020. What do you feel about the movie theaters? Movie theaters are opening, but obviously with these spikes that are happening with COVID-19, where do you think is happening? We saw Tenant has moved. We've seen what's happened with Mulan. We're seeing what happened with Wonder Woman. Yeah. Where are you at right now? Or you know, early rumors are those movies are going to move again, and that we're probably not going to get a new release this year, or at least not even look at one till you know autumn. Um, I think I feel the same way you do about sports, where our country specifically hasn't earned it, mm-hmm. where we can't follow simple guidelines, where we have big states going backwards. So I'm with you. I know you quoted about sports, and I agree on that too. Is We haven't earned it yet. Like, it's such a big risk, and we've really done nothing to earn it. It's one thing to say we need to get back to work. Yeah, we're back at work. Yeah. But now you want your entertainment. We haven't earned entertainment. We haven't earned that. You you argue that, oh, this is for money, like our economy. Okay, well, you're back at work now. So now you're complaining you want more entertainment. You haven't earned that entertainment. That's That's not life or death to me. There is so much... Like, we alone can review four movies and documentaries right now. Absolutely. And, and, like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, they're still out there. There's still stuff that you could do. You can still go out there and watch and be involved with the community. This is a time for a lot of reflection. And here's the problem, though, is there are so many people on this planet, and it's really hard to get anybody to agree. Get a room of 10 people to agree on one thing, mm-hmm. let alone the entire country. And, look, at I, I think the big problem is, and this isn't a political show. But we can do whatever we want. And to me, I feel like wherever you are on the spectrum, the higher powers when it comes to politics have really let down this country. And I I truly believe this on both sides. This Mm -hmm. isn't a to get out of it. No, I truly believe. And if you follow me on social media and you listen to my radio show, I think that they both have screwed this up so bad. And it has allowed for so many people to just say so many different things and to have so many different beliefs. You have people going in front of Congress saying, I wear, it's the same thing like underwear. I do it so I can breathe. Are you kidding me? Like The Parks and Rec. Yeah, Yeah. the Parks and Rec thing that they ended up spoofing. Like to me, that's... That's where we're at right now. So when I when I say our country hasn't earned sports, I don't just mean it to the to you know as a social media type of thing to get likes. I mean it as in we haven't we haven't done enough. We have and when we uh, when we curve the the sickness, we didn't let it drop enough. We still didn't let it well enough beat. And this is what happened. We're seeing the spikes, and we're seeing where these leagues want to go to. Yeah, are the the bubbles 
or where there's Orlando. these biggest bikes. Yeah. And then movie theaters in their own who are petri dishes as already as it is. You know, like we – our brother, Super Ricardo Bro Marcos, was one of these kids that used to take care of – of movie theaters, and do you think that they were really cleaning it to the highest beam? So, like to me, we're we haven't earned entertainment yet. Yeah. We haven't earned that yet. Do I want it? Do our careers and like our passions kind of mold into it? Absolutely. But really, take a step back. Have we earned to watch the NBA playoffs? No, but I also think it's you're gonna have the option. Like if they said Tenet yeah. opens up next week. I'm not going to lie to you and say I'm not interested. Of course. I'm still going to watch because like, I'm, I'm human. And, you know, we have a show. And, yeah. if, and you know, it's a, it's foot to the race. You know, if who gets the interview out first, who gets a review out first, you know more than anyone. So, to me, it's it's easy to say it now. But if basketball's on my TV, I'm going to want to watch. But it's being aware of it. And yeah. it's, being, it's not being hypocritical. It's calling it what it is. It's like, look, if this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. But here's the point. I, this is what I think about it. This is what I believe. And I, I'm posting this on social media on uh, all over the place. I'm like, look, I'm not here to judge you. I'm no, look, it, it's the that's your choice. That is your choice. And if you want to go to a restaurant, God bless you. I hope you don't get sick. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the notion that you. people, most of you, yeah, yeah. Most, most of you. But like that notion of like, we want to see people get sick to prove them wrong. It's like, no, no I don't. What are we talking about here? I'm just calling a spade a spade. Do you think we've earned the right to watch Tenant at a movie theater and grab a bucket, a bucket of popcorn and have a soft drink right there amidst a pandemic? Now, here's where I, I'll play. Like I said, I think on this show we do a good job of devil's advocate. Sure. I see where the other side comes of you want to listen to these professionals when they yeah. said stay in. And now these professionals are saying, you know what? You probably can go to a movie. Sure. So who are – that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not going to judge you. No. Because – I told you listen to those professionals in the beginning, and for me to turn it around now just because I don't feel safe, mm -hmm. that's not okay to me. And no. I feel like that's where we get in the middle of, if they're saying it's okay, and you want to go to a restaurant, that is your right. I hope it's enjoyable, and I hope it goes perfect so I can be there soon. But where the nuance of that conversation is, the jerk who bum rushes a grocery store because they don't want to wear a mask and put other people in danger, that's not okay. Yeah, that's karma a comes and knocks you on your ass. Yeah, but like that's, that's the difference, right? It's one thing to be like, no, I want to go to a restaurant. And the government now says, or the state says, or the city says, I can do that. God bless you. Cool. Be yeah. safe. Make sure you have hand sanitizer, whatever the case may be. But it's the jerk who wants to blatantly go against everything. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's the problem I have where it intertwines sometimes. Well, that's but what that's, sucks. You know. You're going to see that jerk everywhere, even in yeah. grocery stores, yep. even just walking down the street. Like, sure. you're not going to avoid these jerks. So that's where I get a little more, like, I have been to an outdoor bar recently. And that was my choice. You know what I mean? So it comes down to you have to be secure with your decisions, but you also have to be knowledgeable of what those decisions could mean. And, you know, it, it becomes one of these moments where you just have to be able to think about others. But with that in mind, we have these movie dates being moved. So you and I believe that chances are we won't get to see most major releases that we were going to see in 2020 come out this yeah, year. Plus, the Oscars already pushed. A lot of these movies, like the SpongeBob movie coming out recently, that's going to go to VOD. The Jon Stewart movie went to VOD. It's a viable option for these companies. Like, look at Trolls. Trolls made double in the first two weeks of what the original movie had made. Now, where the problem is, these actors aren't seeing the same money out of it. Okay, Justin's really probably will be okay, but I'm not here to judge what they're making or not making, but it is an option now that we can send these movies straight to VOD. These other big blockbusters, wait till November. Let's see where we are. Minimum, do what Fast and Furious did. They were the smartest ones, surprisingly, and moved right it away. an entire, year. An entire like, year. We'll do it next year. We're fine. Let's not worry about it. So do you think we see Tenant in 2020? Yeah. Do you think we see Mulan in 2020? Yep, November or October. Probably do, November. What do you think is the... Just in time for Black Friday shopping. What do you think is the movie of 2020 so far? Do you think there's been a movie of 2020 so far? You know, that's really tough because the year feels weird and you kind of go by months. You kind of go by little moments. For me personally, I think the best movie and the head of the Oscar race is The Five Bloods. That's the Spike Lee yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. I think it's his best movie yet. Um, it's just a great movie. I can't really go into it too much without going into a full review, but it's a fantastic movie. It's on Netflix. Watch it. I really enjoyed King of Staten Island. You know, that's really good. Jed Apatow movie, coming of age for Pete Davidson, really coming into his own. Really enjoyed that. 
The Invisible Man is probably one of the great movie. Tier. Invisible yeah. Man, The Way Back was good. Yeah. Sonic was good. So I mean, I guess those are, but those were so those were pre-pandemic, which almost seemed like yeah. a lifetime ago. They were at the border with yeah. The Way Back because that's when they started saying, "Okay, we're releasing home uh, Trolls uh, Rock Tour uh, onward." So we'll yep. see how how this all ends up playing. Hamilton, up. look at that. They're playing Hamilton, Hamilton Disney on Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah. Like it's gonna be okay, people. If the theaters don't open up right away, or if you don't feel comfortable, there's gonna be options. But what does suck, and we have to acknowledge it, because I, I think it would be very malice and cold hearted of us, is there will be a lot of movie theaters that shut down. There will be movie companies yeah. that don't survive this, and that sucks. It's possible that sucks for this industry. kills the entire movie theater industry. It, there's a very high possibility, and that that is terrible. That yeah. is very sad because it is Americana. The American theater experience is Americana. Yeah. As much as American Pie, as much as baseball, like it is it's part of this like country. The diner, the movie mm-hmm. theater, you know, the the schoolyard, like little things like that really are, like you said, paint that picture of what we thought America was or we wanted it to be in Greece or in Happy Days. So do you have any other kind of thoughts about what's going on in the movie business right now when it comes to kind of what's also implemented in the COVID-19? Because we have some fun news when it comes to some movie talk, but really more the important conversation I'm of the business. I'm interested about the filming. That's okay. what I'm more interested in yes. because filming has resumed and then it unresumed then certain places. And again, other countries are doing much better than us, much, much better. So, And a lot of these films are filmed in London, in Canada, or overseas in general on location. So mm-hmm. I know Batman is getting filmed right now. Because it's in London. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I'm excited about that, and I'm interested in that. I know they're trying to you know, limit contact. I think what someone said, and what we can move on after this, is it's going to be interesting how movie writers write 2020. Yeah. Because can you place a movie in 2020 anymore? Probably not without... You know, look at Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like, you kind of have to change scripts now. Of, well, there was a pandemic and there was a huge movement. There was a lot going on there. Where if you set your movie, if I set a movie, I wrote it. It's you and me, Mike, and I put it in twenty twenty. That doesn't make as much sense right now. It's too in the books. There's too much pain People and knowledge not and be able to look association. Past it. Yeah, yeah. twenty twenty has now become. The, it is the pandemic. Uh, Black Lives Matter year. Yep. And. It's only June. Yep. So, like, we have no idea. We what got the dust next... storms coming, people. We... we had hornets. Yeah, six months is still a long time, so it is going to be a very interesting way. Rest in peace. Kobe died this year. That, and remember when we thought that was going to be the craziest like, that story was, That was the craziest thing. Like, mm-hmm. R.I.P. Kobe, like, that's nuts to me. Like, that's still on here. They have put a successful video game movie out on a brighter note. It's been yeah, a crazy I year, guess. guys. Yeah, it's yeah, been a crazy, enough. intense year. Yeah, so, and we got a Boneyard match. So, we did. Uh, I think we're in for a rude awakening when it comes to things that we love. I think for a lot of people, and I hope this for the general public, for the person who's really level-headed, there's going to be a new appreciation for everything they love. Yeah, There's going to be a growing process. There's going to be a, a really – there's going to be a lot of tough moments still that, that have yeah. to come in. I'm not just speaking of what we don't know. I'm talking about getting back to – Whatever in your soul and your mind is going to be your new normal. It's going to take a lot. Yeah, to there get is. There. I like that you said that because obviously, as a cheer coach, like we appreciate them. Right? I can tell these mm-hmm. kids appreciate having sports back just in practice form. But like you said, new normal is the word. There's never mm-hmm. normal's dead. Normal's dead and gone. It's what is going to be your new normal. What do you build off this? This is the 2020 reboot. This is what do you want to do with this? You can either do positive things with it. Or you can turn totally crazy and yell at Congress people about underwear. <laughs> and speaking about crazy people, good brother, let's go ahead and get into some other serious, very important topic. And that has to deal with Michael Effin Keaton might be coming back Woo! as Batman. There's not a lot of news about it, but just kind of after all that important stuff and all that realness that we were just speaking of, kind of a nice little cherry on top for all you as a treat that they are in talks, nothing's permanent, but the idea of Michael Keaton coming back, do you think that this really shows into the DC movies kind of going into a direction where it's it's kind of just all over the place like the comic books? Yep. It's all in one universe, but it's all not in one universe almost. It, exactly. They're really playing with the well, and I thought they did a good job at the TV crossover saying, we're going to do what we want to do. There's mm. mul- there's multiverses. There's This Flash can be here. All we know is Michael Keane's coming back. He will oh, be boy. in the suit. Mm-hmm. No, And then this from the director. Mm-hmm. And he is not playing Thomas Wayne. He is playing his own Bruce. Batman in that universe. Good. So that's going to be fascinating, General. I'm more interested in this. What's going on with Ezra Miller? He just choked a person. And everyone seems to kind of like 
is there something I don't know about this video? Was it is self defense? I like, think that's the thing is we haven't found on? enough dirty details because yeah. at the time it was so very cloudy of a talk mm -hmm. when it first like, happened. That's going we'll really to, under the radar. Yeah, we'll obviously. Have to play out. But I think because of everything that's going on, we'll have to wait to see if that if that comes back up. What was made of it since? Mm -hmm. What do we know about it when it comes to the police? Because it wasn't in the United States. I don't think. I think it was no, overseas. It yeah. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. But I mean, I think. At, it's interesting because Warner Brothers is going through a lot of weird time Warner. They're selling the video game departments of like the, the video game Nether rights of these and, and all NetherRealm them. and all them. So it's um, it's interesting to see what they're going to do because of this merger. You know, I, I'm really fascinated also to see what does this mean for Henry Cavill because he's been doing a lot of talking recently. Mm -hmm. And you and I still have this running bet where I still think he's not Superman anymore. But nowadays, it looks like he just has the... He, I think he's... Here's what I think. I don't think we're going to get a standout movie for a very long time. It may be even out with Henry Cavill. But I think we are going to get the announcement at Comic-Con that he will be in Shazam and he will be in Black Adam. Not Comic-Con. That DC fandom that they're doing on August. The virtual. Yeah, thing, right? that yeah. very cool That's thing. That's the rumors coming out. The mm -hmm. early little rumors of, you know, we're going to see that. We'll see There's the, also the Batman game, the Suicide yeah, game, the exactly. Suicide Squad game. So I don't think we're getting a Superman announcement. I think we're going to get Henry Cavill coming out with maybe The Rock and... Um, Shazam. Um, uh, Zach. Uh, Zach Levine. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll get the three of them coming out. And that's fun. Three huge muscular men all with superhuman strength. Like, that's my dream. Like, that is so fun for me. So I hope he does. And then I would win that bet that we've Zachary had for so Levine. many years. That we would finally win that he is. All he has to do is wear the cape one more time. And yeah. it counts. He we does. don't count Shazam because we didn't see the face. So I'm not yeah. going to count that. Yeah. But if I get full face Henry Cavill, yeah. you win the you officially win the I officially win the, win the three two year old bet. So just fun. We'll see how this all plays out. I am fascinated to see Wonder Woman eighty four. So yeah. that's going to be really. I think that's going to be great. Uh, Justice League, uh, the little mini trailer we got looked amazing. That looked great. I mean, we've seen it before, but we haven't. We're seen Mark. It you know how we are. We're marks for yeah. Zach. So yeah. like, I'm rooting for him. Yeah, I'm man. rooting for him to work out. I think it's going to be great. I love. BBS and I love the extended version even better. I do think there are very few movies that if you watch the extended version, you're like, no, that made it a better movie. That's one of those. That's on the list of they should have released this one at the time. It's crazy to think only a few years ago that long movies weren't they were avoided. And now it's like every movie's long. Yeah. The Five Bloods was two hours and 45 minutes. The Irishman. These are great movies. People will sit through it. It chapter two was almost three hours. Yeah. Like, well, it was unnecessary. Yeah. But it was, and we sat through it, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Think Another about that. One. Like mm -hmm. these, It's okay. I don't mind, because I'm getting my money's worth, and I get free refills on popcorn. <laughs> so, very interesting stuff that we're seeing from DC, and this is going to be fun with Michael Keenan. But good, brother, we got to move on to something that isn't fun, very serious, and actually seriously, no kidding, is what's going on in the wrestling world. Yeah. A lot of names, a lot of details, a lot of different things. I think generally what we want to just kind of mention talk is... talk about it. Yeah, and more importantly, it's like, I think it's important to just listen to the women and listen to anybody who's claiming abuse. We'll find out, hopefully, and if the world is just, which we know it's not, but let's just run with that, that we will find the ones that did something wrong, and the ones that are false claims will get weeded out as well. Like, even in this little example of just wrestling... We've like even like they've done research now and what maybe it's still about what 98% of these are actual 100% true like mm. that's way too high like I don't care like that's way too high we're gonna look into this and you know good on these women for speaking out good on Keith Lee for speaking out about mm -hmm. his story like because I think that's something that goes unnoticed about sexual abuse overall in the world yeah um you know these British wrestlers that were involved they're scumbags yeah to use your power, to use your authority over these up-and-coming women. And these are the stories we've heard so far. And you know there's more. And it just it gives Joey you a sick, sick feeling uh -huh. of people. You're like, man, dude, like, look at Candace. Like you said with Joey Ryan. Like, she didn't know because it didn't happen to her. And it just, you know, it just happens like that where you don't know these people deep down. You think they do. And they do something like that. And you're like, man, it really gives you a bad taste in your mouth for wrestling in general because – it's all over. It's not just one company. It's all the companies. And you have Sammy Guevara doing this. And it's it's a lot to handle in a wrestling world where you're like, man, this sucks. We're at the very least, I'm willing. And you and I were talking about this when it came to Drew Brees. It's the same thing Drew Brees with Sammy Guevara. Yeah. All right. He did right by calling Sasha. Proper talking, punishment. Yeah, proper punishment. Mm -hmm. So on and so forth. 
I give him the ability to, okay, you were young. You're stupid. You and now He's young now. Yeah. He was so much younger then. I, I'm with you on this. Prove it. Yep. Now you get to prove yep. it. Joey Ryan doesn't get to. Nope. Like that's to me what's worse. There's a big difference between saying something ignorant and 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 terrible and doing something. Well, and what I find despicable is you and I, when it comes to being, you know, me with the network, from where I started, from me having the radio show, being able to work with interns, being able to work with people who, you know, are are looking to advance in their careers. You being a coach, to me, there's nothing more just disrespectful and scum of the earth if you use your power your influence to abuse or take advantage of somebody like these are kill like i don't care if they're 17 18 19 these are children these are not fully developed mentally children even if that's not the case like it meant like who are you to use that to use that power to influence somebody to take advantage of them and to sleep with them and to make them feel uncomfortable like my my issue is Look at I get it. Humans are humans. Sometimes you're attracted to people. People meet at the workplace sometimes. Granted, cool, got all that. There's another thing to groom somebody and mm-hmm. to make them feel like they won't advance at work or that their career will be stalled if they don't do certain you're holding things. holding them hostage. And then the thing, too, is these people don't do these things in front of their friends. Sometimes the friends know what's going on, but you also have yep. to give the benefit of the doubt that these monsters don't become monsters and stay that way. With monsters the, hide with in the plain sight. Dude. We've seen yeah. it in serial killers. We've and seen it in serial anything rapists. bad hides in plain sight. So to me, like that's where it, it becomes. I'm willing to give people, some people the benefit of that they didn't see it because people don't show you their evil yeah, side. I don't blame someone for not seeing it if they truly just didn't. Like I don't blame Candace all mm-hmm. those years because I'm sure if she had something happen to her, she would be the first. And one I'm to speak sure out. she's seen. Things that have happened to she her. She would speak out. That, but like, and I'm that's sure her character that, that we know as her already. But pe- th- she's probably had gone through things of her, her, yeah. her own because she's a woman in this business mm-hmm. that's predominantly men. And as men, like I'm not here to tell you like all men are evil. I'm here to tell you we have to acknowledge the fact though. Okay, you, we get this. We see dudes. We feel comfortable enough to like, yeah, he's a dude. Now imagine if you were the only guy in a business full of women. You would feel like, well. Okay, I'm a little bit. I'm the the re, the black sheep in this scenario. Imagine if you're a woman in a locker room in a wrestling company. I always quote it so this, and we'll move on. Is Nicole always says the best when we talk on Murder Mystery more. When me and Mike walk out to our car in the middle of the night, we will have music in. We're dicking around. Does we're on our phones. We're not thinking about nothing. Moving that car. A woman doesn't have that luxury. Nope. Doesn't matter who she is or where she is. That's the difference, and that's why we need to take this seriously. Absolutely so. Shout out to all those women who were brave enough and ready to do it. And shout out to those who weren't. That's fine too. Fine. You know, if you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Exactly. If you need to find counseling, counseling. If you don't want to make it public, that's fine. Do what you need to do. Get the help you need to get. Just get the help that you need. Good brother. We also have some uh, video game stuff that we could get to really fast. I just finished The Last of Us Part 1. I am jumping to The Last of Us Part 2 that you can watch on Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves. Network. It's funny that uh, that Mike plays all these games, but I do watch all these because yeah. I like the cinematic version of these, and I think that's what video games are best for nowadays. Because I just don't, I don't have the attention span to play them, but I love the storytelling, I love the scripts, and it, it was pretty good. I liked it. I think this is definitely a game that if you play it, you're going to enjoy it twenty times more. Yeah. Sometimes there's stories that you'll enjoy just as much without playing. This definitely feels like one of those. If you play it, you're going to get really into it. It broke some records recently. It already sold about 4 million copies. Uh, It's doing great. It's a great year for PlayStation in general. Yeah, and PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, all coming out this holiday season. I am absolutely... I enjoyed the hell out of The Last of Us Remastered. I really like The Last of Us Part 2. I'm only 45 minutes into it, and about 13 minutes of it was gameplay. So this game, Naughty Dog definitely is showing off what they can do cinematically. I'm also fascinated in this because of the HBO show that's going to be coming down the pipeline about this. So I want to see how much they're going to take of Ellie and Joe. How much is the Fireflies? How much is it in the game? How much of it is pre or post? So I'm fascinated in this. Are we getting a Walking Dead style where Mm -hmm. it's just the universe, but we're really going to do whatever we want? Or are we going to get a a for real retelling? Because a lot of the people who were part of this story are part of the series as well. And the people who brought you you Chernobyl. You've played them and I've watched them. Do you want a retelling or do you want to just play in the universe? As of right now, like I want to play in the universe. I'd like a retelling. I would like a retelling in a movie. If you're going to do a series, I want you to be in the universe. 
There's a difference because yeah. to me, a two and a half hour so Joe walking and Ellie, style, like yeah. you want the in general, we're gonna follow this line, but we're gonna kind of take some take some chances well, here and there. And I don't think you need to like to me if you were starting it right now for the series, it'd be cool to just jump off of you essentially be the Last of Us Part Three. Okay. Like I don't need you okay. to be so in this sequel, time frame. Sequel. Just keep going, yeah, Watchmen just style. Keep going with the series. Yep. By the way, if you ever doubt how the Good Brother and I are. With the pulse of everything, we have been telling you to watch The Watchmen since episode one. And how important it truly is. And now y'all want to jump on the train and think that it's you're free. woke. It's free. It now. is free. Yeah. It's the best show that came out. And probably and, and the temper. last. Yeah, like we said it. We said it then. Man, it's hard because like in the last few years, we got Chernobyl. We Shoot got Executive, When They See one. Us. Yeah, but I'd still say Watchmen to this day, even being a superhero show, is the best. TV we've gotten in almost, man, probably since Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones Season 7. I'd say since Game of Thrones Season 7. Not Season 8. Well, we can, yeah. I like Season 8. Yeah, I like season I'll eight. argue to the depth still. I like yeah. Season 8. People are catching up. Yeah. I like Season 8. But Season 7 was legendary. Yeah. It's on that level of, like, we're going to remember that season, like, Season 3 of The Simpsons for the rest of our lives. So, if you want, you could uh, watch me. I could be your big brother, your big uncle, all that fun stuff. As we play The Last of Us Part 2 on Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Join me, make fun of me, and just enjoy the ride. We're also playing the show 2020. I had a great comeback and the two stinkers. Uh, not yet, but we'll see what happens when it comes to that in real life. Al on Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves. And, of course, on YouTube and Mercado Airwaves Network. A lot of couple really, really Really fun video games coming out. Good brother. Finally, we talked about in the beginning of it. Sports are coming back. So let's just talk as if nothing bad is going to happen. The world's going to be okay. And we do get to see, see some of this. What sport are you most excited to see first? Man, that's UFC tough. has been around. Golf has been yeah, happening. Bubba Wallace. Shout out, shout out to Bubba Wallace. Look, and I know a lot of people I, have a problem. It's a news I think. And like, look it. I get it. Should you have used the word alleged? Should people not have judged NASCAR fans so hard? Probably. But here's the thing. Literally when that was happening, there was a plane with the Confederate flag yeah. flying around the stadium. Like, so like not the, 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 Spain. Yeah, like yeah. The, you know, the raceway. So like let's let's be fair to the situation. But we have some sports that are back. I What are you excited about? None of the ones I want. Like baseball I'm over already because the way they handled it. Yeah, it was bad. NBA Both sides at bad. this point seems pretty pointless. But I want to see like if you could give us a champion, I, 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 I want to see. You know me, I love football. Yeah. You know, we would normally be getting ready for college football coming up. So this is what I think is gonna happen on the football end. I think the first four games are going to be moved to the last four games, and we're going to be we're going to miss all of September. And they're going to push everything back, and we will start in October. So the first four games on your schedule will be the last four games in your schedule. That is what I think is going to happen. There's no way that we don't get another spike by by September. Like I like we're seeing spikes right now. Like that's going to that's why I'm trying out like more October, November's like, and then we get to the winter months where we're like, is that flu season again? So we're, we're right back in it, and literally. The most contact sport other than the NBA is football. Football. And, like, people are getting Rona at the PGA event. So, like, that to me, it's like, I, I don't want to be pessimistic, but I just want to call a spade a spade. If we're, we're betting men, and the over-under is like, will there be a season? Won't there be a season? I don't think, like, I don't think Unless so. Unless you're baseball. You have the least amount of contact. Well, and here's the thing with baseball is there's so many people, though. So the chances of getting it. I mean, we saw 23 players from what? LSU and Clemson get it? Yeah, one, one camp. Like, single camps were having, like, like it's, we were talking about the church gym in Dallas. They had over 20 cases. Yeah. Because they have over 1,000 people going through that gym. So, I mean, I, I think that's what's going to be fascinating. I'm fascinated to see how it plays out. I want to see what the scientists say, and I want to see how the politicians respond to it. But we're getting to it. It's almost July. It's, you know, Alex, you know how much I love 4th of July weekend. It's one of my favorite weekends in the whole calendar. I'm disappointed like anybody that we won't get to celebrate the way we normally would. But we have to take care and take responsibility because I do want sports back. I do want kids to go back to school. I want businesses to open. And in order for us to do that, we have to pull the rope on the same direction. I don't know if these sports are pulling the rope in the same direction. No, not at all. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. Good brother. Are the Bulls still a thing? Yeah, we got to find out. They haven't fired Jim Boylan up, but we'll give Emirates and uh, Kerner Chauvis some time. Call me so when they're good. Call me when they're good again. They got a new front office, so that's a good start. Okay. Good brother. Any final thoughts on this episode of the Good Brothers? You want to talk about anything no, else? I'm trying to think if we missed anything because obviously we've always we missed, missed something. There's plenty of things out there. Yeah, 
Um, like I said, there's so many things on these streaming services. Like, yeah. There's plenty to entertain you guys. Well, I named like seven things just in the last hour. Well, really fast. If you're looking to find something that I was watching just a few days ago with the lovely Nicole Mancha on Netflix, the good brother, you were watching. I watched athlete day, which was basically the gymnastic scandal with all the pedophilia with the trainer. It is heartbreaking, but it is fantastic. It reminds me of the, the movie Netflix put out a few years ago about the steroids um, oh, um, Icarus. Icarus. Yes. Icarus was great. Very much in that vein. Yes. I'm like, okay, this is very important, very hard to watch. Mm. Uh, the Five Bloods, King of Staten Island. Can't high, can't praise those enough. I loved all those movies. Highly recommend all of them. I watched Strong Island, a documentary on Netflix. It came out in 2017. It's made a resurgence right now because of the fact of everything. But I'm done putting their own little yes. section there. So it was basically about a murder that happens, and it's very complicated. It happens in a section of Long Island, and it really shows into how segregated the two, the host island is. So I highly, I highly suggested. I have some criticism t- towards the actual filmmaking of it, yeah. but when it comes to the subject matter of I it, check it, out. it is fascinating. It is heartbreaking. It takes a lot of twists and turns, and it definitely pulls on the heartstrings. It is a must watch for anybody who liked, you know, Thirteenth and all these other yeah. ones 13th. that are going. If you yeah. haven't seen the Thirteenth by now, yeah. go watch the Thirteenth. Yeah. So, or when they see us, like if yeah. you're looking mm-hmm. for something to fill your mind, Ava DuVernay on both of those, fantastic work. Absolutely. So, Good Brother, I think that does it oh, for us. Hamilton, watch Hamilton when it comes uh, okay, out. Okay, yeah, watch Hamilton. Hey, Alexander, That's sounds fun. like a good name to me, man. All right, for the Good Brother himself, Alex Mercado. Adios. I'm Mike Mercado. We'll see you in the next episode of the Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thanks for joining us here on the Good Brothers here on Mercado Airwaves. guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at MikeMMedia and on Instagram at MikeMercadoMedia. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves, our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod, our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More, and of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network, and of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win content prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network